afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd, and I apologize for being late. We had a little trouble with the meeting showing the screen, but you are now here for the August 2019 Tab 3 Virtual User Group Meeting from Attorney Computer Systems, where today we are talking about, what are we talking about, Mary Jo? We're talking about credit card payments in version 19. Uh, we kind of covered it when we did the version 19 stuff, but we didn't go into detail, and we're going we're gonna to do that because we still get so many questions about it. And uh, check settings to make your check line, line up uh, in AP, and I suppose the same thing would apply to trust. Uh, I'm going to take that topic. Mary Jo will take the credit card payments topic. Without further ado, I'm going to press all the right buttons, not just one, not just two, but all 47 of the right buttons to get out of here and into, where am I supposed to be, Mary Jo? Tabs. There we go. Yay. Yay. Are you unmuted? I'm unmuted oh, now. Oh, you are now. Yay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> now you can hear my yay and my joy. Okay. So today I'm going to just talk a little bit about um, getting paid by credit card via a link uh, in the system. And we've talked about setting this up on your email statement so that you know, when you email a statement out, uh, in the email itself, there is actually a link that uh, customers can click on, and they can go directly out and pay that particular invoice, which in turn can come right into tabs into this import online payments. So we're just going to hit how to put it on the email statements very lightly because we've kind of done that in the past in videos. And then I really want to talk about how to import those online payments today. Uh, so first off, we're just going to go into um, email templates. Oops, and I need to get control again. Hold on one second. I forgot, Paul. We had to restart that screen sharing because of technical difficulties. There we go. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to go into our email template real quick. So if you are emailing statements, you have some email templates out here which controls the heading, uh, how, what, where the to from address is, the subject line, and the body of the email. So if I go into uh, the actual general example, whatever here is their default, uh, you can see down here we have a place in this actual uh, body of the email to put some text. We can say uh, if you want to pay your statement online, click here, and we can have that little link there. So down here in the bottom, uh, in this little available field section, you have a couple of options here. You've got your little wrap, so I, I, just, I like to call it just like your little wrap around here. So you've got your begin text. Uh, so we're just going to say, okay, we're going to begin text here. Type what the text is that you want. Uh, you know, if you want to, blah 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 blah. Uh, pay. Uh, here you go, uh, and you can then put in the link. Click here. And so I'm just going to double click that, and there's our click here link. Whoops, and now I've got my stuff all over, but you get the idea. And then, whoops, oh my God, oh my goodness. If you want to pay, click I'm here. I'm going to unmute myself there so I can go. laugh at you. And then we're going to put our <laughs> end text around it. So we just want to kind of have our begin text. Here's what we wanted to say. Click here, and then our end text. Now you've also got the option to put the actual URL out there too if you don't want it to say click here. You could actually have it be, uh, you know, go here or whatever, click on this link, something like that. So this is how it gets out onto an email uh, statement to a client. It doesn't go on the statement itself. It goes into this email template. You can set up all your templates to be able to do that. They would all come in here and they'd be able to see that as soon as they get the email. Click on that little click here option and that will take them out to the portal. It will immediately let them put in the amount they want to pay. And then I'm going to get out of here. And then it is going to come into, let me say no here, I'm not going to save it, uh, import online payments. So you can just type that into your search to find that. And I am going to get into the import online payments. And I don't have any to import, so I'm going to, um, Paul, we're probably going to need to go out to a different, if we can go out to ours okay. um, just for a second. Uh, I have a payment that's out there that can be imported, and I'll show this to you. So we're just going to go into a different system that actually has one because our test data isn't even connected to a credit card account or anything. You know, so, we checked everything this morning. Except for I know. That. We forgot to check that we actually had yeah, an well. payment to come in. So we're just going to go out to tabs, and then I do have a, um, I do have one. So I'll, I'll log in as me, Paul. Okay. So that way then I, I know I've got one here. So we'll just, And I'm not sure who it's for, so whoever it You're is. Not typing. Oh, thank you. 
There we go. Should I tell uh, a lawyer joke while we're waiting? Nope, I got it. Okay. No lawyer jokes, Paul. They're like dad jokes, I think, nowadays. They're pretty, pretty, yeah. pretty lame. All right, so over here I've got my online uh, import online payments. And the really cool thing to do is if you put this, if you're going to accept those payments for those click here, you know, and you're going to put that in there and you're going to email those statements, my suggestion is to open up import online payments one time over here. It's in your recent actions. And then pin it up here at the top because then you have this little badge that's available if any of these payments pop up. So if you're the person that is processing these payments, pin that up here because if you don't have any, like you saw in our other system that we were in in our test data, there was no little badge there. But as soon as a payment comes up and is available to process, this little badge will start counting up, one, two, three, four, however many there are to process. So I have one online payment to process. So I'm going to take and click on that now. And I'm going to come up here, and we are going to see that I have one payment out here, and I can see the amount. The total current balance due is $126. There's the payment for $126, and what statement it is, and all of that. Now if I actually want to bring this payment into tabs and create it, all I have to do is go down to the bottom here, and I can tell it, view each payment record before creating. So if I had multiple payments up here, let's say I had four or five payments in here, and every time when I, I wanted to put that payment in and enter it for each matter, I could tell it to open up that payment record so I could view it every single time, view each payment record before I create the actual payment. Or what's really cool is I can say create the record silently, use this payment code 900, for all of the matters up here at the top that have a payment that's coming in. So if I had six payments up here and I saw that the matter was there, I saw the statement, I saw the amount there, everything looked good, and I thought, yeah, I just want to go enter those payments. I go do it. Create them silently and import the selected records. And what that will do is it will take all of these payments on this list and it will go over to the payment entry window basically and enter those payments in there for you, creating it for each of the matters exactly how it shows on the screen, and then it's already done. You don't have to go into each one and open it, find the matter, add the payment, do the next one, add the payment. Tabs is going to take care of that for you when it imports them in. So it's a one-step thing. The client goes out, you include the link, on the emails, but the client is doing all the work. They're going out and they're going to the website. They're putting in their payment. They're putting in all their information. And then it's coming in here and notifying you, whoops, here's one that you have to import, and giving you the option to either look at it or to go ahead and just create a mass bulk of them all at once. It's really slick. We use this for a long time. I absolutely loved it. It, it, it helps you get paid faster because the client is in control. They can just go out. They don't have to send you a check. They don't have to call and have somebody process the payment over the phone. They can just come in and take care of it, and then you can import them all at once. Awesome. Really, really cool. Awesome. Uh, so we can get out of our live system now, Paul. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so we can close that. Okay. Go ahead. I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to go into accounts payable. <gasps> is that a dashboard? Don't look at that. This is version 2020, which is uh, pre-release. It's not even in pre-release yet, but it is for us as um, President Circle members. Uh, which reminds me that I want to make two announcements, and so I'll make them now, and maybe I'll remember to make them at the end. Version 17 will be sunsetted in October. It's that time of the year. So if you're on version 17, even if you're paying for maintenance, um, that maintenance, that free support is going to go away. Um, so you're going to want to get updated to, to, to the current version. Uh, another thing to know is the 2020, which is what we're calling them now, there will be a new release every year. And so version 2020, which would have been known as 20 if we had just kept on the same naming convention, is about to enter pre-release. And so if you are interested in being a pre-release tester, uh, it is a very safe proposition. There's never, ever been a problem with anything uh, data-related when it comes to uh, pre-release. You get great support, 
even better than what you might be used to from SDI. And you get to see things beforehand and make comments and even help shape how those things will be. For instance, these dashboards. Look quickly because I'm not really allowed to show them to you. Oh, I didn't click. <laughs> get me out of there. I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, two or three things that are coming on version uh, uh, 2020. Uh, support for law pay. Right now we support pro pay for credit card processing. We are moving into a law pay uh, also sort of situation. So law pay support will be in, in, introduced in 2020. As will uh, positive pay exports for AP and, G and trust. Um, something that we used to provide as an add-on module or an add-on custom report because it wasn't in there. Now they're putting it right into the software. And dashboards. You just saw one real quickly. Uh, there have been dashboards added to AP, GL, Trust, and Tabs. So if you want to be in that uh, pre-release world, all you need to do is either email me or simply go to tabs3.com slash pre-release and sign up for that. So enough about that. Let's talk about making sure your checks line up. Oh, Patty tells us we have a question about the other topic. Patty, what do we got? Um, Mary Jo, can you put a link on a paper statement for the client to pay online? You can put a clickable link on the statements, but you could add the text, and they would have to manually go out and type it in. It's not a, you know, a link that they're going to be able to um, click on, which they can anyway. It's a paper statement. But you could um, you know, get a link uh, that it would take them out to a portal for ProPay, but it's different than the you know, click here and the automatic import because the automatic import works off of that click here yes. option. So if you put the option for them to go out and pay, you know, the portal option, I know that's available, but it doesn't link it to that statement and it doesn't bring it into tabs. So there's right. not. It has to be on the email statement. So just to clarify there, it, that's been around as long as ProPay has, mm -hmm. uh, has an option. There is a $400 setup fee that will customize that portal to look like, look, look like a page on your website, put your logo in there, things like that. Um, people go to this site, and, and it's really just a static page where they can type in, um, they can enter the credit card details, but they can then type in the number of the statement that they're paying and the amount that they're paying, and, and it's totally a manual thing at that point. It's not, it's not that it knows that this is for statement 987 and that's $172 that's due. It's, they need to type that in. They need to put the amount in. And then you will get an email and you will have to go in and manually add that payment. So that is the old school way, and that is the only way you can get that on the on the printed printed statement. Mm -hmm. Now the, the the concept is that the link goes in the email, and the email accompanies a uh, a, a PDF, and and a PDF is the only place where you could click on a link, anyways. Um, so that's kind of where that came from, but it is, as, as Mary Jo said, it, 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 it goes in the email, and the only thing that can go on the statement is that static link. Okay, so I'm going to talk about making sure your checks line up. So there's a couple things you want to do. The very first is to go to File, and you can also navigate to this through the, through the Quick Launch bar, but I happen to know that if I go to File and then print check test pattern. Uh, I'm not going to really do it, uh, and there is no option to preview it. Um, I guess I could go to Dropbox, right, Mary Jo? Um, so I'm going to do that. And when you get there, you specify which bank you want to print a, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, you're, you're specifying these the, you're, you're, you're printing this test pattern for all bank accounts, so really you're just choosing a bank uh, and the next check number. Now when you do this, it's going to uh, create and then void that check number, or it's, it's, going to, it's going to use that check number is a better way to say that. And uh, so Mary Jo suggests that you print this on a blank sheet of paper and not waste a check, and then simply take the, the blank check and hold it up in front of the window or in front of the light with the printed test pattern behind it. That way you can see the test pattern through the check and see if it lines up or not without wasting a check. So if you want to be frugal, 
uh, go ahead and just print it on a blank sheet of paper and hold it up to the light against the, uh, with the check in front of it and line it up that way. And then just if you do it that way, just know that it is going to kind of use, see it's going to ask to insert the check. You don't have to at that point. And then when you actually print real checks, okay, like in the, the next batch of checks, just remember that however many of these test patterns you've done, and every one of them is going to use a check number, just make sure that you number back. You can just go back and use those check numbers again. You totally can do that. But it's going to be three, four, five check numbers in advance if you've done this several times to line it up and get it right. Um, just number it back to that check that it's supposed to be that's it, actually the real check in your hand that you're putting in the printer. So just make sure that you remember to do that or you're going to waste some checks. It's going to print on the wrong check and it's going to be, you know. Exactly. Oh, you totally could use a check if you really yeah, want you to. you can use a check. And then void it. So no big deal. We're just but, very frugal people yeah. here. Well, Mary Jo is. <laughs> okay. And so as you can see, it's got, you know, where the date would go, where the amount would go. And you basically just make sure these line up. That's your first point of reference. Really fast. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the key here, too, that's the easiest place to make it so you can line up is to look at these boxes. This is where the, the boxes are at the bottom of your check. So if this lines up, everything else is going to be in the right spot. We don't have control to grab each of these little things and move them into different spots. You can only move up and down and right to left, mm -hmm. and that's everything. But this right here, these boxes on the stub, if they are fitting within the lines of that stub on your, your check that you're holding it behind, you got everything you got else. Everything. Yep, yes. yep. Yeah. So that's just a tip, too. Those things, those things, if they line up, everything else does. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to get out of uh, Adobe real quick and get out of here. And the next place to go is into print checks. And when you do this, um, there is an option for setup. So I went a little fast. I, I went ahead and said OK. And then you go into setup. Now, you want to go into page setup, but I want to go in here real quick. Because I want to tell you that this is where you tell it to print a duplicate stub. So you've got two stubs on that piece of 8.5 by 11 paper. If you find that it's only printing one of those, it's because you haven't checked this box. Also, if you're finding that it's not printing the memo on the checks, because the new, um, the new layout for the checks allows you to have a memo on the check as well as a memo on the, on the stubs. I believe that prior to version 18, we didn't have the memo on the check itself. And so this is where that comes from. And if you still have this checkbox checked and still find you're not getting the memo, you need to go into the bank account setup because that can also be turned off and on per bank account. So this doesn't really have anything to do with making it line up, but these two things we get a lot of questions about. Where's my duplicate stub and where is my, my memo uh, on the, that should be coming up on the checks? So out of there, and I want to take you then into page setup. Now, there's a lot of confusion about these things, and, and this is really what we want to clear up. These settings here, the left, right, top, and bottom margins, apply to all things that are printed from AP or trust, if it happens to be trust that you're in. So if you have your reports coming out exactly the way you want them with the margins that you've already got, but your checks still aren't lined up properly, then you use the offset adjustment. So let's say that these half-inch margins around each side make your reports look exactly the way you want, but your checks need to come down a tenth of an inch and over to the right two-tenths of an inch. Then you would put a tenth of an inch here and two-tenths of an inch, I'm sorry, I set that backwards, a tenth of an inch here, the top adjustment, and two-tenths of an inch for the left adjustment so that it will then push it over to the right two-tenths of an inch and push it down one-tenth of an inch. Now, if it needs to come over to the left, Mary Jo, help me here, but can we put negative numbers in here? <laughs> I'm glad I got her here. Um, negative numbers. So if it needs to come a tenth of an inch to the left, you would uh, adjust this left adjustment by negative 0.1. And that's really the secret that seems to elude a lot of people, including me sometimes. Don't mess with these if they're the way you want them. Mess with these. These are exclusive to the checks. These are going to affect both the checks and the reports that are being printed in the system. And you have to do that for each printer. So every printer has its own 
settings here. So if you're in your printer and then you have to go print checks on another printer, you have to change it for that printer too. Um, otherwise, it's going to pick up whatever their their Good settings point. were. So any of those um, settings there per printer. So when I came into page setup, I already had my printer selected. And you'll, you, if you were to make changes and then change the printer, you'd notice that those changes didn't apply to that other printer because, as Marie Jo just said, it's a per printer thing. So three things to keep in mind there. Um, first off, I'll get the stuff that doesn't really apply to the, the margins and the, the lining up. Make sure that you've got the duplicate stub printing if you want it. Make sure you've got the memo printing if you want it. Then use file print test pattern to print a test pattern and to line that up with your checks and determine how far down and how far over you need to go. Then you come into here, you alter the page setup, you put your adjustments in, and then you can go back and print another test pattern. And, and if you got it right, then you'll be able to see that. And if there's still slight adjustments to be made, you make them in here, and you go back and print another test pattern. Once you've gone through that exercise, you should be fine until you either get a new printer or uh, get the software installed on a new machine. Because these particular settings travel from uh, computer to do not travel from computer to computer. So if you happen to have three people printing checks, Mary Jo, confirm this for me. Is this correct? If you have three people printing checks to the same printer, they all have their own set of printer settings. No, the, That's printer, not true. the printer settings are the printer settings. Ah. Um, so as long as you are in, you know, the print setup window. Um, and you're setting up the settings for that printer, those are for that printer. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that goes across. doesn't matter who yep. you are. Okay. Yep. See, another, another point where I'm glad that Mary Jo is here. Job security. Job security. Okay. Now, remember what I said. Version 17 is being sunsetted at the end of October on Halloween, 103119. If you are still on version 17 or worse yet, earlier, there is an update sale going on right now. Uh, or if you're on maintenance, you just get it free. So if you're on maintenance, be sure to get it updated. If you're not, talk to us about the update sale because they're trying to get people updated before their product goes off maintenance. Uh, also, pre-release, uh, some of those cool things, the LawPay integration, the dashboards in AP, GL, Trust, and Tabs, and the uh, positive pay in AP and, and Trust. Very cool, and a lot of other little things, but those are the major changes in version version 2020. So get signed up for that if you'd like it. Call me, email me, or just go to tabs3.com slash pre-release. Of course, at this point, I'll take you out to attorneycomputersystems.com and attorneycomputersystems.com. Notice the emphasis that I place <laughs> okay, hold on. I don't know what I did. I'm probably concentrating on saying the S at the end of systems and not paying attention to what I'm typing. Uh, pay attention to that S at the end of systems. Uh, if you will hover over the word videos and choose one, or I like to just click the word videos and get to the bigger list, these are the six video titles that we have. Four of them are live events. Three of those live events are virtual user group meetings. We have tabs, practice master, and world docs, virtual user group meetings. And soon we will also have net documents and Cosmolex virtual user group meetings, as those are the newest products that we are offering. Uh, and we also have our Coffee Pot webinar series. These are all live events. And you all know what a virtual user group meeting is because you're in one right now. The Coffee Pot webinars, I invite somebody each month from a company that has a product that adds value to Net Documents or Cosmo Lex or World Docs or Tabs or Practice Master and let them come on and, and explain what their product does, how it works, how it's priced, how it enhances the value of one of our core products. And uh, that's a, a great experience and a great way to learn about things that can, can make uh, Practice Master or Tabs even better. Um, we also have our uh, two pre-recorded video titles. Mary Jo has her eBytes video series. Currently, she's recording three of those each month, one on Tabs, one on Practice Master, one on World Docs. Um, and these are little short two or three minute videos where we take something really cool that we think everybody should know and that we know that we can explain in three minutes or less and we record an e-bite. 
And then for the things that are broader in nature and take longer to explain, we have the Paul and Mary Jo show where I or Mary Jo will take a topic that's broader and spend a, a, a little bit longer, 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes going really deep into the weeds on whatever it is that we happen to be talking about that month, and we record one of these each month. I'm going to take you into the TABS virtual user group meeting page so you can see what these sub-pages look like. This, of course, is a live event, so at the top, and this is true with every title, whether it's live or pre-recorded, you get the title and a very brief description of what that title is, what that series is. And then since this is live uh, event, we get information on the next one. So here we are talking about, and I forgot to mention, next month we'll be talking about transferring and replicating fees, which is a new function within tabs right on the fee entry screen. Mary Jo will be taking that topic. And I'm going to be talking about the new Statement of Cash Flows report in uh, GL. Uh, so those are the topics for next month, as you can see here. Uh, if you want to register, you just fill in these four fields and hit the register button, and you are done. Uh, and then as you scroll down, you will find that we have pre-recorded versions of every other, or recorded versions, I should say, of every other bug or coffee pot that we've ever done. So if we were to go to the bottom, we'd see that there are 26 pages of TABS 3 virtual user group meetings. So we have been doing this for a long time. We have somewhere between 800 and 900 videos on our website, all dealing with TABS, Practice Master, Cosmolex, NetDocuments, or World Docs. So please take advantage of them. They're there for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They are absolutely free of charge, and there is a lot of information. That's it for today. We will see you next month. Everybody have a good rest of the day, good rest of the month, and we'll see you in September. Thanks much. Bye-bye.